fact, here's what the General Agricultural Workers Union are demanding. They want further clarifications from the Agriculture Ministry on claims that the ministry has created over 7,000 jobs with the planting for food and jobs. Here's a, here's a program we just attended. But um, when we say uh, jobs and we say employment, um, it is visible. Uh, you are employed and you know your employer. People in the informal economy, if you want to create jobs for them, we, we look at the type of jobs and how it can be classified as a, as a job. What we are uh, saying is that really it is government's responsibility to uh, provide jobs for e-people. And then uh, we are okay if government is providing jobs. But in this particular sector, we want to see the type of jobs that have been provided, uh, how the jobs have been provided, where the jobs uh, are, and uh, whether it meets criteria for what we call a job. Um, if you are working and somebody has a job, of course, it is visible and it is clear. But it is not just uh, support for agricultural workers. That, uh, so we need a lot of clarification in terms of what uh, the uh, job is. We are okay if government really have um, succeeded in providing jobs for the over 700,000 uh, people. So for example, when you look at the extension agents that have been produced from our agricultural uh, um, uh, colleges in Ghana, um, over 3,000 of them have been uh, have graduated since 2012. And then what we have been told is that they are being absorbed every year. Thousands of them are being absorbed. And we wonder whether they are part of this number because the type of job we know the thousand or less have been involved in is a, a national youth employment type of uh, job where the, they take less than or about 350 Ghana cities uh, a year. Even national service takes more. So if, when we say we have provided jobs, is it the job that we are talking about? So we want more clarification and we have 3,000 of those extension agents sitting at home. So that's Andrew Stego, he's a general secretary for the General Agricultural, uh, Agricultural Workers Union there, demanding further and better particulars, if you like, from the Ministry of Agriculture and what it says, or the jobs it says it has created. And on the back of that, the peasant farmers also have been assessing the policy and raising concerns about timely distribution of inputs for farmers. Bismarck Norte is with the Peasant Farmers Association. I think the, the, the first issue that everyone is talking about is the early arrival of inputs. I would have expected that even by now, uh, the input should have been distributed to the various regions for distribution to start. I don't know how far we've gone with that, but I hope something is better done about that. Also, we are also pleased about the expansion of the, the program to include other crops. We've advocated for that, and we wish that the capacity of this local seed producer also built to ensure that we don't spend so much money to import all these things, so we can have them locally and generate revenues and everything is kept here. We also expect that, especially in the areas of post service laws and management, our statistics in terms of uh, the way we lose our produce after harvest is not the best. And the measures put in place by this PFAG, this PFG is not adequate to deal with the excess laws that we make out of post service laws. So I'd expect that with this year's implementation of the program, there will be adequate mechanisms to ensure that farmers who, who are able to produce and produce their harvest, there's available storage facilities, there's improved infrastructure, farmers have ready market. Because the, mo the, the moment farmers are not able to sell their produce or not able to market it well, there's, it's, an, it's, it's a disincentive for them to produce the following year. But Anote is with the Pe Peasant Farmers Association there and all of them putting their, uh, putting their thoughts together to make this program a good one. Well, the Ministry of Agriculture is confident that the second year of the policy's implementation will be better. The target is to increase registered farmers on the program for, from 200,000 to 500,000. Michael Ousu is a senior agri officer at the Ministry. Like I said, for May. We are getting, you know, a lot of output, about 300,000 metric tons, rice, about 171,000 metric tons, and vegetables as well. So these are additions that, you know, the program is, you know, uh, adding to the national output, which I think is very, very uh, great. In terms of the challenges, you talked about um, issues of storage, among others. Uh, what are some of the other challenges? Yeah, the fall, I mean, worm was also a challenge, and then the, you know, farmer extension ratio. 
it's also a major challenge. But I said that, you know, last year we added a thousand to the number. This year, hopefully, another thousand will also be added to the you know, number to help with the extension delivery. We have been able to identify about six chemicals that are very, very effective in the control of the fall amoeba. So it's not going to be a problem at all going forward in 2018. No, if you say they are free, it means that they are not, it's not going to, uh, you know, it's been eradicated. No, that's not what uh, I'm saying. What I'm saying is that we have a control over the fall amoeba. You see, they, have, they cannot actually uh, put the program in jeopardy at all. There are chemicals that can actually control them effectively. And so going forward in 2018, we are not afraid of the worm at all because we have chemicals that are effective in their control. Michael Usu is one of the officers at the Agricultural Ministry. Well, what he's saying, does it give you any confidence? We'll be here to monitor the progress of that policy and to let you know how it's going.